tackles for a loss and being disruptive. Uh, but where we got to get better on the defensive side of the ball is our pass protection. Um, our pass defense must improve. It is probably one of the one of the two glaring areas where we we drop statistically from a pretty significant standpoint. And that's for a couple different reasons. I think the injury was a big one. I talked about how important creating depth was for the football team. It kind of reared its ugly head along with uh, on the special teams. Not necessarily the kicker and the punter with with our kicker with Brockhouse Khan being back and Bonani both being back, but with a whole new group of guys that were covering it. It's not just the guy that kicks it, but it's the guys that protect for it, the guys that cover the kicks, the guys staying in their lanes and doing those type of things. And we've got to improve special teams wise and pass defense are the big emphasis uh, as we get into this. And then offensively, third down is the key. Uh, my main thing as a head coach, I'm going to create a depth chart. I want to create a depth chart. I think we've got more experience than we've, than we've had since I've been here. When you look at the guys that have all had a playing experience that are coming back, this is the most experienced team I've had going into the same offense and defense now for three years in a row. I'm excited about where we're going to be with our top 22. The thing that uh, I am trying to guard against is where our second 22 because that's going to determine what kind of football team you're going to have. Unfortunately, injury is a part of this game, and we've got to keep pushing. I mean, we've got to keep pushing as a staff because we've got to create some depth in some of these young guys that red-shirted or maybe played a little bit as freshmen last year are really going to need to step up and start to play a key role because we have our biggest senior class since I've been here, the most experienced since I've been here, and I think arguably, I mean, from a talent standpoint, this will be one of the better football teams we've had on paper. What we've got to do right now is put it together from a chemistry standpoint and make sure that we can put all the pieces in the right place, and that's what the next 15 practices will be all about. I'm sure there's a lot of things that I haven't covered. Um, I wrote down a lot of notes here and things to do. Uh, the schedule, the schedule has not come out yet. The league office is finalizing some things here uh, with the addition of Temple a couple weeks ago, which I'm excited about. With Temple coming in, it puts us back to an eight-man conference where we're going to play four and three for this year. And then where it goes from here um, is anybody's guess. I think we know we're adding four and dropping two. And I don't know, it's addition, subtraction, where we're going. But I'm just looking at the 2013 season right now. And that schedule should be out pretty soon. Now, in addition to Temple, I've known Steve Adazio for a long time. I think Coach Golden did a really nice job up there at Temple. They've got a good program. Uh, they're doing a nice job, and I'm looking forward for them coming into the league. And I think with the way it's going to play out, with them taking West Virginia's spot for the 2013 season, it looks like we'll probably be playing on the road at Temple next year at some point in time. So really ready for the schedule to come out so we can see where all that is. But like I said, really excited about getting started and getting back on the grass. This has been a teaser to this point where we can get on the field, but we can't practice just yet. So uh, tomorrow's when it all starts. We, the other thing we've changed a little bit this year, our practices will be in the morning. Uh, we changed our practice times. Uh, we're trying this out. One of the schedules that we've had in the summer is the players have lifted and ran and worked out in the mornings and taken classes in the afternoons. We went to that same schedule this spring. And so for this spring, we will be on the field mostly from about 9.30 to probably about 9.30 to 11.30. Uh, when we do practice on practice days. The weekends will change a little bit. Uh, we'll have our typical three scrimmages through the spring, and they will finish up with a scrimmage on campus on April 14th and with the spring game in Raymond James Stadium, Stadium on April 21st is where everything will finish up. Um, outside of that, that's all, I have, that's all I have to cover or talk about, but I'm sure that there's questions that I left unanswered uh, that I'd be more than happy to answer for anybody. Today provides kind of a, a nice bookend for you. You get to see mm -hmm. uh, your seniors have an opportunity to take it to the next level. Yep. And you got this wonderful opportunity to start a, a new season tomorrow. Right. right. Oh, and it's, it, I, I love Pro Day. I mean, I do. I love Pro Day. These guys, we haven't seen them really since the end of the spring, the end of the fall semester, because so many of them, we talked about 13 out of the 15 had their degree in hand. So they're not back in school, so they may be training at different places. And to have them all come back and get them together one more time and to see Q Washington and Jarrell Young and what they're doing out there and to see the, the Jeremiah Warrens and the Chaz Hines and all these guys, Patrick Hampton, all these guys come back and perform on Pro Day. Uh, it's, their, it's their opportunity. This is their shot. This is their chance, the four or five years of hard work that they've put in. They just want an opportunity. 
and this is their chance to get in there and show where their numbers are from a physical standpoint with their height, weight, and bench press, and broad jump, and vertical jump, and then to take it out onto the grass with their 40 speed, and the 20 yard shuttle, and the 60 yard shuttle, and the L drill, and all the numbers that they keep. But I think probably the most important part of pro day is the individual period that they do at the end. Uh, I think that's really where they have the opportunity to show what kind of football players they are. You know, there are a lot of people that may have measurable numbers that will never play it down, and there's probably a lot of people that don't have the measurables that have played for a lot of years in the NFL. So uh, I just am hopeful that these guys get the opportunity that they're looking for. But where I'm most proud of them, like I said, is 13 of the 15 have their degree already in their hand, that if the NFL doesn't work out, that ought to be a dream for all of them. But if it doesn't, they have a degree to fall back on, and that's the important thing. You know, every story, every season is its own story. Mm -hmm. How long for you to take to kind of get past last season, all those finishes, close finishes, the season, this, the script could have been an entirely different one. Yeah. And what does that tell you about this team and what it needs to improve on, specifically those close finishes? Is that something you can't really work on that? or you just make Well, sure you no, you can't. I mean, you can and we need to. And we're going to have to get inventive, like you said, every – Every season's a new book, you know, it's a whole, new, a whole new book that we're writing on a new chapter. But every season it starts all over in January again. Um, from when will I get over it, when next year's over. I, I mean, really, it's, that's one of those things that sits in your crawl and you're only as good as your last game and we can't get on the field again until September. And that's one of the things that drives you as a coach, you know, is we're, we're only as good as our last finish at West Virginia, which unfortunately is not a memory you want to carry with you uh, for 12 months. But that's, that's where we are and that's what we have. We, we have to learn. That's, we can say we should have been better. We can say we should have been able to finish out those games and we were one play away, which it literally was that close in a lot of those football games. But we didn't. And so what do we have to do now for the next 12 months? We don't get to start from there. As I watched Q Washington and Jeremiah Warren and all those guys get ready for their NFL days, we've got to start all over again. We have a new group of seniors, a new group of leaders. We've got uh, different talents. We're going to have some younger players who are going to have to step up in some key roles. And what we've got to do a better job of as a staff is being able to finish that, finish that game, to be able to close it out. As I looked at it, the biggest thing that we looked at going down the stretch, I mean, um, our pass defense has got to improve. You know, we had the lead with nine minutes to go or less in six of our seven losses. You know, you're, you're, you're that close. I mean, the, that close, but when you have the lead, people are going to open their offense up and they're going to throw the ball more against you. And if we're able to get off the field and able to stop the pass, um, then you win. You know, we go down and score at the end of Cincinnati, but it wasn't over. You know, I mean, we couldn't stop them going down the field. Same thing happened at West Virginia. You know, when we go down the field and we're in field goal range and turn it over, they drive the length of the field. There are some little things. We've, we've spent a lot of time studying the fourth quarter. Uh, I said, I'm really not interested in breaking down the first half of all the games all season. I said, but what I want to do is I want to take our seven losses and I want to break down the fourth quarter. More than you normally would with more, losses? More than, more, more, because when you look at it, that, is the, that was the one thing that was consistent um, through many of the games this year, where normally we would break down the season. I said, I am most concerned with the fourth quarter. That's where we need to spend our time. And that's where we talked about our pass defense, our third down efficiency on offense. Late in the game when we had an opportunity to keep drives alive, uh, we weren't able to finish the game offensively. We weren't able to finish the game defensively. And our special teams had a hand in that as well. And so those are the things that we've looked at and said this is where we need to improve. Now, how do we get better at it? We've got to work harder at it. Uh, we've got to put our both sides of the ball in more competitive type drills and practice. Uh, where there's winners and losers and third down situations, we've got to put more pressure on our players to produce in those pressure situations. Uh, that's what we've got to be able to do a better job as a staff. That's, those are the things that we've looked at uh, as we've looked at it. And we still got to continue. You know, there are young guys on this team that, that didn't play a snap not last year that are going to play for us this year. So we can't just correct what we did wrong last year. We've got to build a whole team with it. You know, we, we can't just, we've got to start at ground zero. Don't take anything for granted. There's going to be some great competitions going on in the spring. I don't have a depth chart as of today because everybody's going to roll. Everybody's going to get their opportunities. And we'll formulate the depth charts as we, as we get into the scrimmages in spring. So we're not coming into it saying, okay, BJ's one and Bobby's two and you know, uh, Matt Floyd's three. Um, they'll all roll. They'll all get equal reps. And they're all going to go out there and they're going to prove their worth. How does a coach uh, 
Because I'm sure as you're analyzing your players, you're analyzing yourself, you're analyzing Agreed. your staff. Agreed. What kind of job do you think? You, do you think there are things you guys could have done better as a staff looking back? I mean, anything that... Oh, hindsight's out? always 20-20. Yeah. You can yeah, always sure. look back and go, okay, we lost, you know, we lost these games late. What could we have done to put more pressure on our players to be able to finish those, to be able to finish those games? I think the best teaching thing we have is the film itself. I think that is the best teaching thing we have. As I've told this team, they were they were good enough to be an 11-1, 12-0 football team. They were talented enough to be that good, but we don't do all the little things the right way yet. And sometimes you have to have this pain in your belly you know, to, to come back out and be that much more committed uh, to saying, you know what, we're not letting, we're not letting the little things slide. Uh, that's a mistake, but that'll get us beat. You know, literally, when you're, that, when you're that close between what people would consider success and failure being uh, an 11-1 team or a five and seven team, you know, when you're that close to it, but the difference was that close, was a play in, in five games. And so you're, you're right there. And I think that may be one of the best teaching lessons we have. Uh, I think the senior class that we have, we have this is the best group of leaders we've had since we've been here. This is the largest senior class I've had since I've been here. And I think we've probably got more talent and experience in our senior class than we've had in the other, in the other uh, two that we've had. You know, when I just go back and I look at guys like